Okay, let's go ahead and get started. This is going to be a companion piece to the infectious diseases lecture that uh, Cheryl uh, completed uh, in my absence. So I'm actually doing this uh, in my hotel room um, in Columbus as I'm um, doing a workshop with the National Registry of Emergency Medical Technicians. Um, this is going to be a little supplemental information, and fill in some gaps, and help you with some terminology that you may see on your block exam. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So what we're talking about here is infectious disease progression, and a lot of this is just terminology and understanding what some of these terms mean. Uh, so if you look in the upper left-hand area here, I have a little graph, and I've graphed signs and symptoms slash uh, replication, organism repl replication. I've just kind of thrown all that together. Okay, that's going to be a function of time on the um, x-axis. And, and so what I have here is I have just some situation where somebody has been exposed to, to an agent, a, a disease-causing agent, a virus or bacteria, fungus, uh, what have you. All right. And so if you get exposed and you actually get infected, there's going to be a period of time where you're not really going to have signs and symptoms. And in this, this initial period of time is what's known as the incubation period. It's initial infection to onset of signs and symptoms. Okay, so here I have the initial, um, initial um, infection. And then I have the beginning of, uh, of replication and, and signs and symptoms um, of infection here. And so this period of time where I don't have any signs and symptoms of infection is known as the incubation period. Now, there's also another period of time that is contained within the, the incubation period. Um, it may or may not occur. This is something known as the latency period, and this is more specific to viral infections, and it is a period of time where viral replication does not occur. That's the latency period, if we're talking about a virus here. The virus... Uh, you, you become infected, you become exposed and infected, but the virus does not actively replicate. And that tends to occur within the, the incubation period as well. And then it begins to replicate. And then um, in, in, in all cases, uh, the initial onset of signs and symptoms in most cases tends to be fairly mild. Okay, and you guys have all had a cold. Um, how did it start? Well, you know, you kind of have a sore throat, maybe a little stuffy nose. It's just real mild signs and symptoms initially. And it's kind of the, the, the pseudo calm before the storm, so to speak. And this period of time where you have mild signs and symptoms is known as the prodromal period. The prodromal period is the first onset of mild signs and symptoms of the disease. And then from there, you move into what's known as the acute period where you become very acutely ill and you have significant signs and symptoms. This is the active replication. You have marked signs and symptoms. Okay, And then that peaks off and hopefully you can mount an immune response and then your immune response begins fighting that infection. Okay, And then once you kind of go over the hill and you start actively fighting it, and the replication is halted, okay, then you move into the last period known as the convalescence period. And the convalescence period is, is a quote-unquote period of recovery where replication decreases, signs and symptoms decrease, and you uh, tend to get better and better, and this asym kind of asymptotes down to a uh, baseline, uh, generally to a pre-infection um, status. Now, contained within this whole disease progression is also another concept that's very important. This is known as the contagious period. And this is just one example of a contagious period for some sort of disease. It doesn't necessarily have to look like this, but it's the period of time when a patient can spread the infection, and this period of time can vary. This period of time can actually begin within the incubation period. So you can have an asymptomatic person, okay, and they can still be infectious. Or maybe it begins when the patient begins to develop signs and symptoms, as is the case here. It begins in the prodromal period. It doesn't necessarily have to. 
it can begin in the incubation period. And then the infectious period um, begins somewhere in the incubation period and ends somewhere um, within the acute or convalescence period. Um, sometimes it'll end fairly shortly in, in the acute period. Sometimes it won't end until near the end of the convalescence period. So you could be getting better and still be um, contagious. Or you could be fairly symptomatic and, and be um, non-contagious. It just varies from, from organism to organism. Okay, so that's the, this terminology here that I wanted you guys to be familiar with, uh, the, what the incubation period is, what the latency period is. We're talking about viral infections here. What the prodromal period is what the acute period, what the convalescence period is, and what the contagious period is. Some additional terminology that I want to hit on just to make sure we're all on the same page is, first of all, what is a pathogen? Well, quite literally, it's just anything that can cause disease. Is We're specifically talking about uh, viruses, bacteria, um, fungi, um, protozoa, um, those kinds of things. Um, and some other terms that ha have to do deal with how bad, quote-unquote, a specific pathogen is. and is, uh, These are the terms virulence and pathogenicity. Um, virulence is kind of seen as the degree of damage that an agent can cause. So something that's highly virulent is, is going to wreak a lot, a lot of havoc. It's going to be associated with you know, significant morbidity or perhaps mortality. Pathogenicity is um, looking at the disease-causing potential, and there's a lot of interrelation between virulence and pathogenicity. Um, so I don't want you to get too hung up on specific terminology um, because these are fairly interrelated, and some people might even use the terms virulence and pathogenicity uh, synonymously. Um, some other terms that you want to be familiar, familiar with is the term antigen. And antigen is not the same thing as a pathogen. An antigen is, is on a pathogen, but it's a foreign molecule, typically a protein, because it has a complex uh, structure that can actually be identified by the immune system. But it's a foreign molecule that induces an immune response in the host organism. Um, and, and that tends to be a complex protein um, on the outer uh, part uh, or sometimes within the uh, cell wall of the pathogen. Or if you're talking about a virus, it would be within the, the capsid of the, of, of the virus, typically. It's a, an, it's a molecule that's on the surface capsid. Um, an antibody is a little different from antigen. An antibody is what the host organism produces. It's also known as an immunoglobulin, and it's a protein that's produced by plasma cells. And it, it, it basically, it, it actually is um, the body processes these antigens, okay, and they become an integral part of antibodies or these immunoglobulins. Um, and these are what allow the body to identify and neutralize pathogens. Okay, so you get infected with a pathogen, the body identifies the antigens of that pathogen, and then with those antigens, uh, they create antibodies. Okay, and of course, it's a bit more nuanced, and we've talked about the immune system in some detail in pathophysiology, and I'd uh, I would just ask you to uh, review that material if you're confused. And, of course, Cheryl's uh, doing an infectious diseases, an entire, an entire uh, lecture on infectious, infectious diseases, so you'll have that at your disposal as well. And then, finally, I just want to talk about uh, Koch's postulates, and basically these are just basic postulates that were put forward um, that really kind of cemented the disease, um, the, 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 the microbe um, theory of, of disease, or what we call the germ theory of disease. And, and in order for something to be a pathogen that causes a specific illness, four basic things need to happen, uh, more or less. So um, we should be able to find the microorganism, the pathogen, should be found with, in large quantities within the diseased animal. Okay, so if you take an animal with a certain disease, you're going to find large quantities of a certain organism within that animal that you will not find within the healthy animal. You may find some in the healthy animal. For example, um, we all have E. coli in, um, in, our, in our gut, in our intestines, um, but we shouldn't have a whole lot of E. coli um, in our urinary tract. Okay, 
And then what, what should happen is those organisms should be isolated from the diseased animal and then grown in, in cultures, grown in pure cultures. So you take a culture of that, that organism, you isolate that organism, and then you grow it. Okay? And then once you have grown that, that, or, that, that microorganism in pure cultures, um, that microorganism should cause disease when introduced into a healthy animal. So you, you grow it, you take it, you introduce it to a healthy animal. Okay, and then that healthy animal that gets disease, you need to be able to re-isolate that, that microorganism from that, that animal that is diseased, and it should more or less be identical to the original microorganism that was, was introduced um, up here. And we know that there is some a degree of mutation and genetic drift and uh, shift that, that may occur um, because uh, particularly bacteria are really good at uh, you know, lateral gene transfer, pla uh, plasmid conjugation, those kinds of things. So we would expect some, some mutations, but we would expect the exact same species of, of bacteria um, with just a few modest uh, changes, uh, some genetic changes, not an entirely new organism. And so by, by using these postulates, that's really how we have been able to um, find out what diseases cause what and what microorganisms are associated with uh, what diseases. Um, so there you go. Um, all right, so this is the end of the uh, supplemental material for infectious diseases. I hope you guys are doing well in class, and uh, I will see you all on Monday when I get back. All right, take care.